Yeah, hi everyone, Mr. Markwick here. Today's video I'm going to show you how to factorize by completing the square. Um, I've got one example up here, three clear steps. Hopefully this helps uh, when you've got a question very similar or you're asked to complete the square. Uh, before I do that today, before I go through that example, I am just going to quickly show you or touch on factorizing difference of perfect squares. It's really important that you're familiar with this process before you attempt to factorize by completing the square. So here are three examples. X squared take 16. That's my first question, right? Now, again, when you factorize, the first thing you should look for, is there a common factor between those terms? In this case, X squared and 16, there's no common factor. Um, so I'll move on to, is it a difference of perfect squares? Two square terms separated by a minus sign. So I can factorize this using a difference of perfect squares. You set up your binomial products with two sets of brackets. At the front of both brackets goes the square root of the first term. Okay, so the square root of x squared is x. So that goes at the front, and at the back of both brackets goes the square root of that second term. So the square root of 16, in this case, is 4. And the x and the 4 are separated by a plus and a minus sign. Okay, pretty simple. That's factorized. Again, the second example I've got there, x squared takes 7, very similar no common factors, set up our two sets of brackets for a binomial product. Again, the front of both brackets is the square root of that first term. We already saw that the square root of x squared is x. And at the back end, we write the square root of that second term. Uh, in this instance, the square root of 7 is an irrational number. We want it to be a nice whole integer. In fact, we're going to leave it as a third. We'll leave it as a square root, root 7. It really is as simple as that. Plus and minus. Done. Okay. There are cases where you can simplify thirds. Um, this one, root 7, can't be simplified. I'm not going to touch on that in this video. I'm just really showing the process of factorizing difference of perfect squares, including thirds. So this third example, and this is where people get a little bit unstuck because they see um, x plus 3 all squared minus 7 and think it's a bit more complicated than those first two. Again, it's is there a common factor between those two um, terms? No, there's not. So you set up your binomial products at the front end of the brackets goes the square root of the first term. Now, in this case, the square root of x plus 3 all squared is x plus 3, just like the square root of x squared is x. Okay, so at the front of both brackets, I'm writing x plus 3, x plus 3, and at the back end of both brackets is the square root of that second term. We saw 7 already is not a square number, so I'm going to write root 7. And again, plus and minus. Now, this is the example that's going to help me with that third step over here, factorizing by completing the square. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's look at this example. We have x squared plus 8x plus 1. Again, first thing you're asked to look for when you when you want to factorize is there a common factor between all three of those terms? No, they can't be divided by a common factor apart from one. So next thing, is it a difference of perfect squares? Remember, difference of perfect squares, two terms separated by minus sign. Difference mathematically means subtract. There's no subtract symbol there. There's more than two terms, so I can't use that process. I move on. For me, the next step is, is it a, um, can I factorize this using the sum of products method? So are there two numbers that multiply to give me C and add to give me B? In this case, the answer is no. The only two numbers that multiply to give you positive one are one and one. And they certainly don't add together to give you positive eight. So I'm now going to move on to the fourth type of factorizing um, that I'll be talking about anyway, which is completing the square. And the first step in completing the square is to add the value of b over 2 or b divided by 2 all squared and also subtract b over 2 all squared. In this example, the value of b or the coefficient of x is positive 8. Okay? So I'm going to add 8 divided by 2 all squared. So uh, b over 2 all squared. In this example, the value of b is 8. 
So 8 divided by 2 is 4. All squared is 16. If you had a negative here, you, your answer is still going to be a positive because a negative number squared will equal a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. Anyway, mine was 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 16 and subtract 16 to this expression straight after the bx term. Okay, I'm going to add it in here. So I'm going to rewrite this expression, x squared plus 8x. I'm going to drop in now plus 16. I'm also going to take 16 and keep that positive 1 on the end. Oops, on the end here. Um, now you probably think, well, why have you done that, Mr. Mug? Why have you added 16 and take 16? It makes no sense. Well, it actually helps with us to factorize those first three terms using the sum and product method. Or some of you might recognize this as being a perfect square as well. Now, sum and product tells us what two numbers multiply to give us positive 16 and add to give us positive 8. In this case, the two numbers are 4 times 4 and 4 plus 4. So I can factorize the first three terms, x plus 4, x plus 4, that's just the first three terms, as I said. And I still have minus 16 plus 1. So minus 16 plus 1 is negative 15. Now, x plus 4, x plus 4 can be simplified to x plus 4 all squared. Still have minus 15. Now, I hope you can notice that this stage I'm at, x plus 4 all squared take 15, is very similar to the example we had over here with x plus 3 all squared take 7. Again, I've got two terms separated by a minus sign. I'm going to use the difference of perfect squares method to factorize that, and that'll be my last step. So again, set up your two sets of brackets. At the front end of both brackets goes the square root of that first term. In this case, the square root of x plus 4 all squared is just x plus 4. And the back end of the brackets, I'm going to put the square root of that second term. In this case, 15, again, is not a nice square number, so I'm just going to leave it as a third, root 15. And again, in between, I'm going to have a plus and a minus. Okay, and that's it. I know it's only one example, guys. Hope it helps. There are three clear steps here. Hope they help too. The one thing I will just quickly talk about before I stop this video is if you do the first two steps, so you've added b plus 2, oh sorry, b over 2 all squared and subtracted b over 2 all squared, you factorized the first three terms and got to this stage here and let's say for example you have x plus 4 all squared plus 15 and notice this is different from the example we've got here and the three examples I showed here, the difference is this one has a plus. All right, that cannot be factorized any further because it's not a difference of perfect squares. Remember, difference mathematically means subtract. Okay, because this is a plus, we can't factorize it using the difference of perfect squares. Anyway, for my class, uh, for the sake of my class anyway, we'll j I'll just be giving or setting some um, questions which can be factorized fully using completing the square method. So, hope that helps. Like I said, use this as a bit of a blueprint Here's one example, but again, uh, your questions will be very similar in terms of the process used. Again, thanks for watching and good luck.